Hello and welcome to the Action Update Order Tutorial. In this video, you'll be learning about the order in which actions update, that is to say the order in which they run, where they do their thing, where they make the thing happen, from the moment they start, how they continue to run, and then how they stop. This is a very important concept to understand because rearranging the order of actions can often yield wildly different results. Let's take a look at this scene here. In this scene, I have a cube, a sphere, and on the cube, we have this FSM, which starts with a wait action. It's going to wait three seconds before it sends this next event. Okay, so that transitions down here to this rotate move towards wait state, where I have a rotate move towards and wait action. In here, we have a rotate action. So this is going to run first. It's going to rotate the cube 45 degrees on its Y axis. It's only going to do that once. Then we have a move towards action. So it's going to move the cube towards the sphere. It's going to finish within 0.1 units of it. So it'll get right on top of it. And it's moving at a max speed of two. Then after that, we have a wait action, which is just going to wait five seconds. I'm using this hide unused here to kind of hide a bunch of these other parameters that we're not currently using. Typically, you would use a finish event for something like this. I might say next or whatever, but I'm not going to use that. I'm actually using a finish transition. So I'm just going to hide unused right now. This is just going to wait five seconds. And once all these actions are done running, this finished transition is a way of automatically sending off to the next state once everything in the state is finished running. A finished event is something like your system events and UI events. It's something that actually has its own function. It's not just some arbitrarily named event and transition. So this finished transition knows once all these are done running to then send off to the next state, which is complete, and we're all done here. Nothing left to do. Okay, so let's see that happen. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, we're waiting three seconds. This is going, going, going. Next. Okay, rotated, move towards, and we're waiting for the five seconds to go up, and then we're complete. Okay, now this time, I'm going to toggle a breakpoint here. So toggling a breakpoint will make it so that the game will be paused once this state is reached before anything here fires off. And then I can go frame by frame to see how everything works out. So I'm going to hit play and we're going to watch this. Okay, we're waiting for our three seconds and then, okay, we get stopped here. Nothing's run yet. You'll see that our cube is still facing the sphere. But as soon as I advance one frame, you'll see that our cube is now turned 45 degrees. That happens on the first frame. Another thing that happened is it's also already moving towards the sphere. The clock on this wait action is also now ticking. So as I progress, let's say right about here, okay? The move towards is complete but our wait is still running. You'll see that the actions which are complete get grayed out like this, but the wait action is still active. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unpause it and we'll see that it was starting about like right here on this little thing. A couple seconds had gone by in frames. All right, makes sense. I'm going to remove the breakpoint and now this will just run how it did before. However, in the rotate move towards and wait state, I'm gonna come up to this little gear icon and I'm gonna select action sequence. And you'll see that our actions get this little arrow added to the bottom of them. Okay, see those? Let me disable it so you can see what it looks like before. Okay, they're just lines, but when you activate it, you add little arrows. An action sequence is a way of running the actions in a state in the order that they're stacked, the top one being first and the bottom one being last. So what should happen now is this rotate should go, should rotate first, and then it'll move towards, and then this five seconds will start ticking. Okay, so let's play that and see it happen. Okay, we got our wait, and here we go. Flips it, moves towards it, then the wait starts. As opposed to before, when the move towards and wait were happening simultaneously. An action sequence makes sure that these things happen one after another. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable this action sequence. And this time, I'm gonna tell our rotate action to be running every frame. So it's gonna rotate this cube 45 degrees every frame. It'll kind of be freaking out, but since this thing is running every frame, that means it doesn't really have a way of being finished in a way. And if this action can't finish, then this finish transition is never gonna get sent off. Things need to be completed before this finish transition does its thing. So let's watch this happen. Okay, waiting three seconds and then, 
Okay, spinning all crazy, right? See this weight? And our five seconds is up. This thing is still spinning around, which means we're still here in this rotate move towards weight state. So unless you have something explicitly sending an event to transition off to the next state, things that run every frame will keep you on that state. A way to illustrate this further is if I removed this finished transition and instead I used finish event on this weight action. You can add that and say, go off to the next state. Okay. So even though this is running every frame, now when this weight finishes, it should send off to complete. Okay, here we go. Spinning all crazy every frame, but it's about to get sent to complete. Okay, and that's because our wait action explicitly said, when this is done, send off that next transition. And that's the same thing, honestly, as if I change this to none, right? So this wait action doesn't send any event. You can also have a move towards finish event. So if I selected next, this wait action won't even finish. It won't get a chance to do its thing because this move towards actually happens sooner, right? So when I play it this time, the move towards will send off to complete, and you'll see that the progress bar on the wait won't even get to the end because it takes longer to wait five seconds than it does for the cube to move towards the sphere. So let's watch this happen. All right, here we go. All right, and boom. You see that? Sent off to complete before that timer even finished. I'm gonna add in a state, call this one hit target, and this one gave up. If this move towards completes, we'll have a new event called hit target, and that'll send off to the hit target state. And instead of calling this event next, we'll add a new event called gave up. Okay, and that will send over to the gave up state. I'm just gonna remove this next transition. So if move towards completes, then it goes to hit target. But if five seconds passes first, then it'll go to gave up. And now you'll see that if I lock this state and I play this and then grab the sphere, move it away from it, it's never completing the move towards, which eventually send it to the give up because this wait action was able to finish before the move towards could. All right, so let me show you something else. Over here, I have a game object with an FSM on it that just has some simple math actions on it. We have a set int value, which sets this my number int variable to zero. Then we have an int add, which takes that my number and adds two to it. Then we have an int operator, which then takes that my number value and multiplies it by two, right? And it stores that result back into my number. In this order, the way it should happen is my number is zero at this point because it gets set to zero. Then when we add two to it, z that's zero plus two, so then it would be two. And then this int operator multiplies that two by two, so the final result should be four. Let's hit play. Okay, there we go. Comes out to four. Now that's because these actions are running first, second, and third. If, however, I put this set int value down at the bottom, it's gonna add two to zero. So we start with two, then we do two times two, which is four. But now at the bottom, we have this thing that's saying set my number to zero. So it's just gonna clear that out and set it to zero because that's the last thing that happens in this order. So I'm gonna hit play and you'll see that my number value is zero. So this is a very clear illustration of how rearranging your actions can yield very different results. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.